In today's video, I'm going to go over six different example problems for calculating the work done on an electric charge when it's moving through a uniform electric field. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, especially if you're one of my students. Get all of our excellent videos from Step by Step Science. Don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and share this video. In addition to that, I have made a bunch of teaching learning materials. You can find my Teachers Pay Teachers website. Whether you're looking for example problems, practice problems with all of the solutions, notes for a bunch of different topics, games and puzzles, and labs you can do with PHET interactive simulations, they're all available at my Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. Let's go. This is example number one. We have two parallel plates. We have a positively charged plate and a negatively charged plate. And when we have the, those charged plates, we have between the plates a uniform electric field. It goes from the positive plate to the negative plate. And we're going to say that the distance between the plates is 40 centimeters. And we're going to say that the electric field strength between the plates is 150 kilo newtons per coulomb. That's the electric field newtons of force per coulomb of charge. And we are going to put a charge in there right in the middle of that electric field between those plates. And that charge has a charge of, that particle has a charge of 2 millicoulombs. All right. And when we put that charge in there, it is going to feel a force from the electric field and that is going to be directed to the left. And if we want to hold that charge there, if we want to move that charge to the right, then we are going to apply an external force and the external force is going to be to the right like that. This one is to the left. Did I say right? This one is to the left and this one is to the right. Okay. And we want to figure out, we're going to calculate how much work is done by the external force and by the electric field when we move that charge 20 centimeters to the right. This is a negatively charged particle. This is a negatively charged plate. If we want to move that charge in this direction, we're going to have to do work on that charge and we can calculate the work done with this equation. It simply says that the work is equal to the force times the distance times the cosine of theta. I will talk about what the angle theta is in just a moment. But you can see we don't know the force, but we know the electric field equation says that the electric field strength is the force per unit of charge. And we can rearrange that to solve for the force. So the force on that particle is going to be Q, the charge times the electric field strength. We can substitute this term right in here for this F, and we get that we can calculate the work done on that charge is Q, the charge, E, the field strength, D, the distance times the cosine of theta. Theta is the angle measure, whether you use theta or alpha, whatever you want to use, we're going to use theta. The theta is the angle between the force and the displacement vector. This is the displacement vector. This shows us where we're going to be moving the charge to. And this is the force. So we're going to calculate the work for the external force first. The work is going to be equal to the charge times the electric field strength times the distance, which is right in the middle. So we're going to be moving it to 20 centimeters, which is 0.2 meters. And then the cosine is of theta, and theta in this case is zero degrees. Where do you get zero degrees? Well, this is the displacement vector. This is the force vector. The theta is the angle between those two vectors. And those two vectors are parallel to each other, and they point in the same direction. So the cosine, or excuse me, the angle is going to be zero degrees. So we have cosine of zero. Now we're just going to multiply all those out. And it's a little bit interesting to think about, well, cosine of zero, what is the cosine of zero? Now, if you don't remember that from your cosine curve, which you should, you can look it up on your calculator and you'll notice that the cosine of zero degrees is one. So we multiply all those together, we get 60 joules. So if we take an external force and move that charge all the way to the negative plate, we're going to do 60 joules of work. Now, what about the force done by the electric field? Now, even though we're moving the charge in this direction, there's still a force from the electric field. It points in the opposite direction. And we're going to calculate the work, and it's the same charge, it's the same electric field, it's the same distance. But in this case, this displacement vector and this force vector are parallel to each other. They point in opposite directions. So that's 180 degrees is the angle between them. And if you remember your cosine curve, that's minus 1. It's the cosine of 180. And therefore, you get the same magnitude, but you have a different sign. And in this case, it's minus. Now, you'll notice we didn't put the sign in here minus for the charge and minus for the charge. 
This minus sign comes from the fact that the cosine of 180 is minus 1. And that is because when we move an object at a constant velocity, then the work done on the object has to be equal to 0, the net work. And if we add 60 and minus 60, you know that's 0. So we're figuring out the magnitude of the work. It's not a vector quantity. It's a scalar quantity. So you never use the signs. Okay? This negative sign comes from this minus 1. That's number one. Now, one of the points I want to point out is we calculated the work. We got 60 joules. And you should remember that the change in the work, excuse me, the work done is equal to the change in the potential energy. This charge is here. We want to move it this way. It doesn't want to be here. So we're going to be giving it some energy. And when we give it energy, we're going to be doing work. And the amount of work that we do is equal to the change in the potential energy. We're going to be increasing the potential energy of that charge. Because if we bring it over here and then we release it, it's going to fall back down this way. And when it falls back down this way, it's going to be taking its potential energy, which is going to be decreasing, and it's going to be converting that potential energy into kinetic energy or motion. All right? But just remember, the work done is equal to the change in the potential energy. Let's do example number two. Now, for example number two, we have a positive charge. We're just going to switch the charge, and we're just going to let it go, and it is going to move in that direction, okay, because there's the force from the electric field, and we want to figure out now how much work does the field do. Okay, it's basically the same thing. We have the same values over here, same charge. It's positive this time, and we're going to put those numbers in there, and we get that the cosine is of the angle Okay, the angle is zero degrees. They point in the same direction. They're parallel, and that's one. And once again, you would see that the electric field would do 60 joules of work when that uh, particle moves in that direction. You kind of have to be uh, a little careful. Are you talking about the work done by the field or the work done by the force or some other, uh, you know, some external force? You have to make sure you know which force uh, you're trying to figure out the work for. All right, that's number two. Number three, we have a positively charged particle here. Now that is going to feel a force in that direction from the electric field. And in this case, we're going to move that charged particle across, perpendicular, across that uh, electric field lines. We're going to move it across the electric field. And we're going to use the same equation to calculate the amount of work that we do. And I think I said in this case, we're going to be moving the charge 10 centimeters, okay? We're going to write all, all the numbers here. We have the charge, the electric field, st strength. We have the distance, 10 centimeters, 0.1 meters. But now you've got to notice here that the uh, angle between the force and the displacement, okay, the force and the displacement is 90 degrees. This angle theta right here is 90 degrees. And, of course, you remember 90 degrees is zero. And zero times any number, if you check that on your calculator, is equal to zero. The point being, when you have a charge and you move it across the electric field, just like if you have something in your arms and you're carrying it across a flat surface and you're moving through the gravitational field, you do no work and when you move that charge across those electric field lines. When you move a charge perpendicular to the electric field, across the electric field, you do no work. Don't forget that. Okay? That's example number three. Okay, now we have another one, and then this is example number four. And in this case, we're going to take that charge, which is going to feel a force from the electric field, because it's negative in that direction, and we're going to move the charge in this direction. So we're going to have to apply an external force to the right, and we can move that charge to that location, or we could take that charge and we can move it to that location. And we're going to figure out the amount of work done when we move that charge here, or we move that charge along this path to over here. You'll notice that the distance from the plate is the same for both. That's a little bit of a hint, okay? So we have the same electric field, the same charge. When we go along path A, we're gonna say that that path is 25 centimeters and the angle between the displacement vector and the force is zero degrees. When we go along this path, we're gonna say that that distance is 30.5 centimeters and the angle between the force and the displacement is 35 degrees. When I take this charged particle and I move it over here, I'm moving against this force. So really, even though I'm moving it along this path, the force that I'm applying is in this direction. And the angle between that direction and the, and the displacement is 35 degrees. Okay? So, we are now going to figure out the amount of force done, the amount of work done by when we move it along path A. 
we have the charge, we have the, the, the effective field strength, we have the distance and the cosine of zero, and of course that's still one, so that's 75 joules. Okay, we're moving at a farther distance than previous. Last time it was 20, and now it's at 25 centimeters, so it's 75 joules. Then we're going to measure and figure out how much work we do when we move along path B. Okay, same charge, same electric field, greater distance, but the angle this time is 35 degrees. Now, I don't have memorized what the cosine of 35 degrees. It's not a standard one that you might memorize. But if you do that in your calculator, guess what? You find out that the amount of work you do is still 75 joules. Because really, the way to think about it is you're still moving it through the same amount of electric field. The electric field is parallel to this charge, this path, and across this path, but you're moving it the same through the same amount of electric field, which is basically this amount. You could think about it, if I move it up here, I do no work, and then I move it this way, the amount of work would be the same. Okay, and the key is that the distance from the plate to the charge is the same in both cases. So it's moved through the amount, same amount of electric field. And really the path you take to move this charge to here or to move this charge here, it doesn't matter. The amount of work you do, the change in the potential energy is not dependent upon the path. It's once again the same thing in a gravitational field. In fact, I could take this charge and I could move it all over the place, over there, over there, back there, right there. Sometimes I'd be doing positive work. Sometimes I'd be doing negative work. But if I added up all the work that I would be doing, it would still be 75 joules. Okay? Even if I take that circuitous path like that. Okay? It doesn't matter how I got from here to here. All it knows is that I'm moving through this much electric field. Okay? That's another key point to remember. All right? Okay, now we have this really interesting example. This kind of is a summary of kind of a little bit of what we've done so far. You can see we have this charge at A. We're going to move it this way, this way, this way, and this way. And we calc use this equation to calculate the work. And the question is, you should think a little bit, how much work do we do on that charged particle when we take that charged particle from here to B, from B to C, from C to D, and from D to A? Just like that. All right. So let's see. How much work do we do? Anybody, anybody have any good guesses? That's right. We do no work. The sum of the work for those four paths is going to be equal to zero because there's no change in the position. There's no change. It starts here, goes back, and ends up right here again. I could take this charge and move it all over the place and bring it back here. I do no work. And you can think of it a little bit. When we go from A to B, okay, we would be doing positive work. Okay, the four, or the field would be doing positive work. All right, then we go from B to C, and we do, and, and we didn't be, no work would be done. And then we go from C to D, and we do negative work. And then once again, we go from D to A, and we do no work. So you can see, across the field, there's no work. All right, and when we go in this direction, we do some work. When we go in this direction, we do the same amount of work. It just has the opposite sign. We add everything up, we end up with zero joules. So if you start and end in the same place, you do no work. Similarly, if you start here and you just go across, you do no work. Okay? Okay. That's another interesting question. Okay, here's the last one. Uh, let's see. For no, uh, example number six, there's also another equation. We use this equation to calculate the amount of work that we did, and we got 60 joules. There's another equation you can use, uh, which is that the amount of work done... Okay, the change in energy, all right, is equal to Q, the charge, times the change in the voltage, or the voltage through which the particle is moved. So here it's right in the middle. Okay, so its work is equal to Q, the charge, times the voltage through which, or the potential which, through which that charge is moved. V is for voltage. All right. Now, you can see we know the charge, but we don't know the voltage. But we can calculate the voltage using this equation. The voltage is equal to E, the electric field strength, times the distance. Now, that vo this equation we use to calculate the voltage most of the time all the way across the plates. Okay, So we're just going to calculate the voltage all the way across the plates, the change in the voltage. And we're going to get that E, with electric field strength, times the distance. It's still 40 centimeters, 0.4 meters. And the voltage difference across those two plates is 60,000 volts. 60 kilovolts, 60,000 volts. 
All right, now we can use that to plug into here, all right, because that would be the change in the voltage. All right, we can plug that in here. So we say the work is equal to the charge times the change in the voltage. Now, you have to remember this is 60,000. We use 0.4 here. So that's the voltage all the way across. We're only moving it halfway, so it's not 60,000, it's 30,000. Okay? They're like that. And that's all I'm going to say about that. And you, if you do that, you can see here 2 times 3 is 6. Okay? And here you have 10 to the minus 3. Here you have 10 to the plus 3. And you have a 0 left over, and you still get 60 joules. So you get the same amount of work done by the field or by yourself, whatever, when you move it that same distance, when you use that same equation. Okay, so this is one of the equations. Now, let's just summarize. We're almost done here. I'll summarize. First, we use the work equation, and then we substitute it in from our electric field equation that the force is equal to QE. So we substitute that in there. So this is one of the equations we use to calculate the work. Now, we also just, in the last example, number six, we use this equation. Well, you, the, the change in the voltage is the voltage times ED. All right, now we did that in two separate steps, but you'll notice here that this voltage is this voltage. I can substitute that in there. I can substitute ED in for the voltage. All right, and that means that I can have this equation. And you'll notice these two equations are the same equation. It's really the same equation. You're doing the same thing, you're just doing it differently. And one of the most interesting things, if you look at the gravitational field, when you do work in the gravitational field, we use this equation. You can see this equation and this equation are the same one. Now here, for F, we have the gravitational force. This is the equation we could calculate the work done when we lift something up straight up in the air, off the tabletop, off the ground, and we have to apply a force. The force is equal to the weight. Well, how do you calculate the weight? Using Newton's second law, Fg, the force of gravity, is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.81. I can substitute that in here. And you basically see that you get the same equation. All right, this is, the, this is the equation we often use when we're calculating how much potential energy. Remember, the potential energy is equal to the change in the work, or the work is equal to the change in potential energy. Mass of the object, the acceleration due to gravity, and this is the height, which is the distance. We use h when we use this equation, but really that's the distance through which it's being moved. So you can see all three of these equations are basically the same. These two we can use, or this one we use when we have electric fields. And this is when we, we use when we have gravitational fields. Isn't that amazing how it all works out, all fits together? Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Please support the channel. Get all of our excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a nice positive comment. Oh, yeah, don't forget to check, click the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. And don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.